So the first case we're hearing tonight is REZ 2020-03. Uh, Ms. Molly, that is yours. Yes, thank you. Good evening. This is a request by the applicant to rezone approximately 72 and a half acres on Belleville Road from RA, Residential Agricultural, to PD, a planned development. The general motivation in this case is so that the subject property can be developed at a greater residential density. The ULDC standards for PD zoning are in your packets. Access to and from the subject property is off of Valdell Road, a county maintained major collector road. Concerning the comprehensive plan future development map, the subject property is within an urban service area and depicted as a rural residential character area. Her comprehensive plan guidance rural planned development zoning is listed as a permitted zoning within a rural residential character area. Aspects of this case, uh, in addition to previously stated information, include the following. The Nelson Hill planned subdivision to the southwest PD zoning is close to being built out. There's PD zoning to the south. And the current growth trends in the area are supportive of PD zoning. The planned future widening of Valdell Road is a consideration, and the future paving of Quietstone Road and county and water and sewer connectivity are available and required. Staff finds that this request is consistent with the current growth trends in the area and with the community goals of the comprehensive plan. The TRC considered the request and had no objection to comments. Thank you, Mom. Do any commissioners have questions for staff? Uh, yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I got a question. Uh, so the plan is to, to widen Valdale. You know, have a time frame on that? No, sir. They're looking into that. Okay. Sort of kind of put the cart before the horse, so to speak. Be like 41 to 1. And we proved, proved, proved that we didn't get it done. It's just a safety issue, is what I was concerned about. Molly, are the, are the applicants, who is the applicant, far enough along to determine where the entrances into this proposed subdivision will be in conjunction with, for instance, the Limestone Road? Or, do you have that, or do we wait for the Yeah, we got some Site plan shows. Okay. There are two entrances, one just south of the Clydesdale Road, okay. T, and then north of it. And you mentioned the potential baby of Clydesdale Road. Is there a time yes, sir. That, or that, is, uh, that is in the process August. right now. Okay. Engineering plans and. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah. Are there any other questions for staff? All right, if not, we'll turn it over to public participation. Is there anyone here tonight who wishes to speak on behalf of this request? Please come forward and state your name and so. Thank you. 
Up a little bit while they continue to work on that. Leave your voice. Yeah, sure. Um, I was just saying that before we talk about the proposed lot sizes and the development, I just wanted to acknowledge first that people living in that area have expressed concern about the traffic, and we're not saying that there is no. We're not saying that there is no issues to be addressed with Um, the county has expressed the commitment, we understand, to provide the road and address the traffic problem with this or without it. I mean, the traffic is already there. We have subdivisions that are already out there, subdivided lots that have been approved, rezoning plans that have been approved. This is a necessary thing now, whether we do this subdivision or not. And the county, I understand, and acknowledges that and is prepared to move forward and make the improvements and changes to the road that are necessary to handle the increased traffic. That's something that happens with or without the subject. An argument could be made that the traffic count for having more lots subdivided out there would get you to the numbers faster. But, but I, I, I would understand that the county is aware of the traffic issue and is committed to widening that road. That's an issue that I, that I hope that we can set aside for now and focus on whether this development fits in with the comprehensive plan and whether it's consistent with the surrounding subdivisions and surrounding areas. So, yes, we know the traffic is a problem. I'm confident that the county engineers and the county fulfill the commitments they made while that road and handle that traffic problem. So, I'd like to go forward and spy that. The subdivision that is proposed behind you is very similar to the surrounding approved subdivision. And the average lot size is 9,191 square feet per lot. The smallest lot that you'll see out there are a little larger than 8,000 square feet. And the largest lot is a little less than half of an acre. So if you want to compare the surrounding subdivisions, the subdivision that Clint Joyner had approved recently just south of the trailer park, the density property, has an average of 7,080 per square feet uh, per lot, and that's per his application. So if you look over at Grove Point, they've got several different lot sizes over there, but in phase three, the majority of those lots are right at 8,000 square feet. And everyone is aware of Nelson Hill, right across the street. Those lots are an average less than 5,000 square feet per lot. So the lots that you see behind you, despite having a, uh, the same developer, are a significant amount larger. We're talking about an average of well, over 9,000 versus less than 5,000. So this seems to fit really nicely to me. It's a little bigger than Nelson Hill. It's bigger than what Clint's doing just south of the trailer park. Grove Point obviously has larger houses and larger lots, but it's a good mix, very consistent, very average size compared to all of the neighborhoods that are surrounding it. Uh, the houses that will be developed in subdivision will run from about 1550 to 1850 per square foot houses, and the intention is for them to be three, four bedroom houses. That's the plan. Of course, that's not going to be something that could change if you don't want to go with a bigger house, but we'd like to have cousins required at least that many of the size. The water and sewer are built out in that area. The Department of Community Affairs and the local government has adopted comprehensive plans to direct how the board commissioners should approve development in this area. And the way this subdivision is proposed, it 
So we have a proposal for a subdivision that is very similar to the surrounding subdivision. It fits well into the comprehensive plan as has been adopted by the county. The water and sewer infrastructure has been built out and really there is demand for houses in this area. The, the house sales in the area already have led the developers and let us know their demand is there. The county has approved this area for this type of development through the comprehensive plan. The water and sewer infrastructure is already built in the area and the county is committed to widening the road handling the increased traffic that's already there. I greatly appreciate your consideration and approval of this request today. Thank you, Mr. Lundell. Do we have questions of our speaker? I know you're aware of the uh, two previous subdivisions that we, have been approved through the county commission the last four months or so. And I'm just curious, if approved through them on the 10th, do you have a timeline on when they might when they get started on that? I'm just curious. I really don't. I don't know. You know there are two houses out there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that they've made a decision on how they're going to do that. We've presented this plan as if the houses are going to be removed from the property because this is the most density we would ever foresee happening out here. So we thought it would be best after the most, most density. But I don't know this plan. I'm going to be sorry. Just curious. <laughs> so there's no plan for when they might get started, I understand, is that what you said? Yes, sir. Do you know, if, could you share with us if you know, is it going to be done in phases or are you going to go full blown all at one time? I, I expect it to be done in phases. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lundell. Do you. All right, we do have a couple of minutes left if there's someone else here tonight who wishes to speak on behalf of this request. Anyone else tonight wishing to speak on behalf of the request? If not, is there anyone here tonight who wishes to speak against this request? Please come forward. Anyone wishing to speak against the request? Please come forward. If not, I'll turn it back over to the commissioners for any final discussions. I have a question, Molly. I completely glazed over. I know the TRC met. They had no objections, correct? Correct. Okay. Any other questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Madam Chair. Commissioner Walls. I'd like to make a motion regarding this uh, case RAZ 2020 03 to uh, rezone this sub property from residential agriculture to a development. Uh, this um, request has been found to be consistent with the growth in the area and comprehensive plan, so I'd like to recommend that we recommend approval. All right, we have a motion to recommend approval. Do I have a second? Yes. All right. Uh, second. All right. We have a second from Commissioner Graham. All right. Is there any discussion on this motion? All right. If not, all those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. All those against? And it carries. 